Hey, welcome back. In this video on how to use the Qt Game Engine, I'm going to be teaching you how to take that entity that you just created and have him move in response to the keyboard, keyboard keys being pressed and have him rotate in response to the mouse. In other words, have him always face the mouse. So let's go ahead, fire up the IDE, turn on the screen recorder and dive straight into the code. Hello. Okay. So let's go ahead and get the entity moving. All right, so if you remember from the previous tutorial, right after we created the game, we did a bunch of code to basically create an entity, create a, uh, an entity sprite, create a sprite sheet, um, extract a bunch of frames of the sprite sheet and put it into the sprite. So if, if you can think of that as like a bunch of things happening to create the graphical representation of the entity and then attaching the graphical representation of the entity to the entity. I basically took all of that code and put it into a function. So I'll show you how to use that function. It's in the utilities. I just put it there so that you can um, quickly use it. So go ahead and do include QGE utilities and then use the function like so. Um, so we're going to create an entity. And if we use the function get minotaur entity, this basically does, I'll go ahead and show you the definition. As you can see, it creates an entity, it creates a sprite sheet, it creates an entity angled sprite, it puts all the animations into the sprite, and then it sets the uh, sprite, uh, it attaches the sprite to the entity. This is basically a copy and paste of the code I had in the previous tutorial, but put into a nice function so that it doesn't clutter up our main. So here we basically, create entity right now our goal in this tutorial of course is to move the entity make him a little bit more live um, so all right so now we got to go over entity controllers the way you usually um, add uh, behavior to entities in in the cute game engine is you attach what are, what are known as entity controllers to the entities uh, entity controllers range they they do a, a variety of things um, so I'll show you examples of a couple uh, but anytime you want to add some sort of a behavior to an entity, think, is there an entity controller uh, that can do this? So lucky for you, there is a built-in entity controller and you can of course make your own entity controllers. Um, but there is a built-in entity controller that will actually move the entity in response to the keyboard keys being pressed. And I'll show you how easy it is to use it. So the controller is called uh, uh, Keyboard Mover. Uh, I'll type it out, <laughs> it's easier to just use it. So let's go ahead and include the header file for it. So all entity controllers begin with EC. For now, I may change this naming convention later, but so uh, keyboard mover perspective. That's the controller that we want to use. And we're going to create, so we're going to create the entity controller. Um, there it is. So what do we want to call it? Let's call it keyboard mover controller. Uh, this. And all entity controllers, they take an entity in their constructor. So this is the entity that they're going to control. We want this entity controller to control, control the entity we just created up here. In other words, we want this keyboard mover to move this entity. So we're going to pass that into the uh, constructor. And that's it, really. Now you can actually move. Um, let's go ahead and launch it at this point and watch the entity move around. So I'm going to launch this. Hopefully it compiles pretty quickly. Nice. Oh, we did not add the... Uh, so let me go ahead and add. We didn't add the entity to the map, actually. So we should do that first. So after we create the entity, we should add entity to map. So we'll do entity, we're gonna set his position to 300, 300. We're gonna uh, set facing angle to zero. We want him to face zero degrees, which I believe is to the right. We're gonna add an en entity to the map. There we go. Now he should appear and he should be movable if everything goes right. My fingers are crossed. 
Okay, so I'm gonna press the uh, uh, WASD keys. By default, that's what moves the uh, uh, entity. So as you can see, when I press W, he moves forward relative to his angle. When I press S, he moves backwards. Here, he's gonna move to the right. And now he's gonna move to the left. Kind of looks like a moonwalk when I move him backwards. <laughs> That's kind of cool. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, there he is. I'm gonna play around with this for a little bit because I kind of like seeing it. Let's see the moonwalk again. Ooh, <laughs> fancy. Okay. Um, so we got him moving. Let's get him to rotate to face the mouse. And again, you guessed it, there exists a built-in entity controller that gives this behavior to your entity. And this is actually called um, Mouse Facer. So let's go ahead and include its header file, just like when we use any other class in the game. Uh, EC Mouse Facer. And you can quickly read the documentation of the entity. It's good practice, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna basically go to this uh, symbol and here it is an entity controller that makes an entity constantly ro rotate towards the mouse and it gives you a nice little example of how to use it you basically pass in your entity to the constructor that is all that is needed once constructed the entity passed into the constructor will continuously rotate to face the mouse so the reason why I went ahead and read the documentation is to show you that this is really how you should program with the cute game engine it is very well documented all the classes, all the functions have examples and really thorough, easy to read documentation. I've put, um, I've put a lot of effort into ensuring that all the documentation is uh, nice to read and um, it gives you lots of examples. So I hope you constantly check the documentation. Anyways, let's get back to the fun stuff here. We will create the entity controller. So uh, we're gonna create another one right here. Um, EC mouse facer so we're gonna call this let's see mouse facer controller and again we pass the entity to be controlled in the constructor of the entity controller I hope that wasn't a tongue twister okay so there we go and now let's run it and check it out Okay, so, whoa, cool, see that? As I move the mouse, he rotates to face me. And then as I, you know, move forward and backward, he moves relative to his facing angle, right? So when I'm facing this way and I move forward, he moves that way. Kind of cool. So let's do a quick recap, right? This is the entity, but what you can't see is the entity. The, what you can see is actually the entity sprite. And remember that the entity sprite had frames from a bunch of different angles? Here you can see that, that uh, this indeed has a bunch of different angles. So to do a quick recap, I know that this is gonna be a little bit redundant, but I think it's worthy. Um, anytime you wanna add some sort of a behavior to an entity, you should think, is there a built-in entity controller that I can use to quickly give this entity that behavior? And if there isn't, the best way to implement it might be to create your own entity controller. And one last little tip I'll show you really quick is, the, if you don't already know, is the uh, Cute Creators uh, type hierarchy. So if you want to know all the different types of entity controllers that already exist, one thing you can do is, uh, let's see, uh, we're going to go over this entity controller, right click it, and we're going to do open type hierarchy. And right here on the side, it will basically, so entity controller base class is that. All right, so we found its base class. Now we're gonna open the type hierarchy of it. And voila, there we go. So here's a list of all the entity controllers that we have. As you can see, there's quite a lot and I'm constantly adding new ones. And if you wanna add your own behavior, I recommend you make your own entity controller. That's it for this tutorial. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.